Dr. Ken with you again. Um, lesson uh, number four, or part four, I should say, of lesson six. I indicated there was three, but we're doing just a little add-on bit at the end. It's a bit of an introduction to Power Factor to give you a head up, heads up for the next um, lesson, which goes into it in far more detail. But just a quick introduction. So power factor uh, is the way we describe the phase difference between the supply voltage and the supply current. We use the uh, symbol lambda, which looks like an upside down Y. Power factor lambda is the cos of the angle. And the power factor can be found from a ratio of true power and apparent power. And here's the formula for it. Now, there's, there's nothing magical or tricky here. I'll just uh, draw our power triangle again. And if you remember, this is what our power triangle basically looks like. And we have the S, we have the P, and we have the uh, angle theta. And of course, we know that uh, cos is the ratio of the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which in our particular case, the adjacent is the power, and the hypotenuse is the S. Therefore, That's why we can simply say the cos of theta is the true power divided by S because it's simply the trigonometrical ratio around our power triangle. Nothing more sophisticated or tricky than that. So power factor and the power factor triangle, I kind of just did this for you very quickly. Our power factor can be found from the ratio of power, true power and apparent power. So again, without going through all the uh, drawing of diagrams and things again, effectively the S is the adjacent, the P is the hypotenuse, and cos theta is the, the angle and it's just a trigonometrical ratio. That's why we can say true power divided by apparent power is the cos of lambda or the power factor. For those who uh, love the mathematical solutions, here's a little example. Let's say we had an AC motor that takes a current of 12 amps at 230 volts 50 hertz at a supply of a power factor of lagging of 0.8. So it's important to know that there's a lagging power factor and it's 0.8. So we want to know the true power taken by the motor, the phase angle between the motor and the supply current, the apparent power provided by the supply source and the reactive power. So the things we've been told, we've been told the current, we've been told the voltage and we know that we have a power factor of 0.8 that is lagging. So first we want to find the straight power taken. So we know that power equals VI cos theta, so 230 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 0.8. We have all the right values in the right forms. So we end up with 2,208 watts or 2.2 kilowatts. So the next thing we need to do is equation two. We need to find out what the, the power factor is because the Although we know that, sorry, we know the cos power factor lambda is 0.8. So we can now work out the angle. So simply cos to the minus 1.8. Put that into your calculator. will tell you the angle. So now we have answer 2. We know we have an angle of 36.87 degrees. The next thing is we needed to find the volts amps. The voltage is multiplied by the current. So the VA is nice and easy. They told us the voltage. They told us the current. We don't have to worry about any angles, it's just volts times current for VA, giving us 2,760 volt amps, or 2.67 VA. And finally, to find the Q, 
nice and easy. We can just use volts, amps multiplied by the sine of theta. So 230 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 0 0.6, 0 0.6 being the sine of our angle. Remember our angle was 36.87, so the sine of 36.87 giving us uh, 1656 volts, amps reactive. So here's our little triangle. Um, we had 12, amp, 12 amps at minus 36 degrees, 230 volts. So we've just done a, a power triangle to scale now. So effectively we've done a little vector diagram. So phasor diagram, we've got our true power on the bottom, our reactive power and our apparent power on the hypotenuse and of course our angle at 36.87 remember this is a phasor diagram and it's rotating in this direction so it's rotating around anti-clockwise therefore the apparent power is uh, the angle is a lag the true power is lagging the apparent power So what would happen if we could uh, reduce our power factor from our from where it was at 36 degrees and uh, bring it back to a power factor of 0.9. So we're moving from 0.8 to 0.9. So you can see here the true power hasn't changed. It remains the same. But if we recalculate using 0.9, you'll find that our reactive power has dropped down. It's now at 1.2. So it's dropped down, which means our apparent power has also got smaller. So we've saved apparent power by bringing this angle down. We've started to reduce the amount of apparent power as well as true power. Remembering a power, power apparent power, that's hard to say quickly, has both components. In other words, it has the reactive component of power that does no work, and it has the true power that does all the actual work. So causes of a low power factor, the basics are lightly loaded electric motors. So an electric motor might be a 5 kilowatt motor, and if you look on the stamp on the plate, it will say um, point, probably 0.8 power factor, great but that's only when it's pulling its five kilowatts that it's rated at. If it's rated at five and it's only say pulling one kilowatt of load, you will find the power factor is something far less than 0.8. So similarly for lightly loaded transformers, they're lightly loaded, their power factors will be quite poor. Fluorescent lights, because ballasts are put in series with fluorescent tubes and um, that ballast is an inductor and quite often when they add a capacitor to help correct the power factor in the lamp. So how can we go about determining power factor? And the way we can go about measuring power factor is by using a watt meter, an ammeter, and a voltmeter. So here's our load, here's our motor. So now we're determining the power factor. We've got a motor, we've got a supply voltage, and a watt meter. A watt meter actually measures the current between M and L, sometimes they call them I1 and I2, sometimes they call them M and L, and V1 and V2, which is the voltage. So basically a watt meter is a voltmeter and an ammeter combined, but they're done in such a way that they actually allow for the power factor automatically. So it actually displays watts. Of course, our voltmeter and our ammeter, they only give us volts and amps. So by using these three instruments, a watt meter, an ammeter, and a voltmeter, we can actually work out all the different components around our power triangle. So watt meters measure true power. So they measure the P. So our watt meter is measuring P. That's what this one's doing here. It's measuring P. And of course, that's this side of the triangle. 
the voltmeter and the ammeter, as their name implies, only measure volt amps. So the volts multiplied by the amps, the VA, that's the combination of these two, gives us the hypotenuse of the transformer. And of course, once we have these two, we can now use this formula to calculate the cos of the angle, which is that one in there. So, how can we determine power factor? To do that, we're going to need a watt meter and a volt amp meter combination to work out two sides of the triangle, then use a little bit of trigonometry to work out the cos of the angle and then the angle itself. Okay, uh, as with most of my lessons, I've found a few slides that are very, videos I should say, that are very helpful. I found one on uh, finding current in single phase systems for true power and one on true power, reactive and apparent power. And again, I can't run those out of this particular lesson medium, but I'll put them as links on our e-learning facility.